a legendary day because if you have not heard, you must be an under rock. The best linebacker in the league will reside in the Bay for the next five, six seasons. He signed a five-year contract extension that kicks in next year that will keep him with the Niners until 2026. Well, through 2026. Uh, oh, happy days. Oh. I do it. I told y'all it was coming soon. Jason was like, oh, well, technically he's going to side Thursday. And that's what I said he's going to side. I mean, he's going to ink the deal. 19 a year. I mean, party at Bam Bam's house. Um, One million over the next highest paid linebacker in the league, which is fair market value. I mean, that's what you're going to have to pay for a linebacker. Um, I'm going to let Jamie get in to all the details this week. Um, you know, she'll get into that on Friday, 9 a.m. on Good Morning Niner Empire. Uh, before we get into what we're going to get into today, which will be our offensive all-time draft, uh, remind everybody to go to twitch.tv forward slash Niner Faithful Radio to join us for all the live streams of all our shows and also... Go ahead and use your free subscription with Amazon Prime through Prime Gaming to go ahead and subscribe to your favorite Twitch streamer, Niner Faithful Radio. We greatly appreciate that. For the Faithful by the Faithful pre-launch sale is coming July 30th. Save 20% off of all our designs. Make sure you go to NinerFaithfulRadio.com forward slash shop for more details or go ahead and follow Niner Faithful Radio Shop on social media on Facebook and Instagram at Niner Faithful Radio Shop and on Twitter at Niner Faithful RS. Go to SeatGiant.com, use the promo code Niner Faithful Radio, all one word, to save on all your concert, theater, and sporting event tickets, as well as help out the show. Get officially licensed Niner gear from Shop49ers.com by using our affiliate link that will be in the description of this podcast or video it costs you no more and it really does help out the show go to ninerfaithfulradio.com to check out all the previous episodes of all our shows and of course follow the show on social media on facebook and instagram and tumblr at niner faithful radio and on twitter at niner faithful r all right ladies and gentlemen boys and girls of all ages Let's go ahead and start. Oh, what's cracking, everybody? Okay, so, like I said, we, we're not going to get into the – I haven't even looked at the Bam Bam details. I just, you know, did the quick math on, on what it would be per year. But um, $40.5 million guaranteed. Um, I, Jay will get into do all signing and all that. But, um, I mean, well-deserved. I, I – I, I, I bought speeches because I knew this was going to happen. It's just, you know, it, it, it's confirmation that, you know, like the shirt's going to say for for the faithful, by the faithful. You know, in Lynchingham, we trust. I, I believe that there were some people that were rumbling, the force Buckner, the force Buckner. Well, I, I think that the Niners felt it, it, it's different when you, you drafted Fred Warner. And, and let's be real. Um, I think it's very clear that Fred Warner is the best player drafted in 2018. Um, you know, there might be some people are out there that might be that he's the best draft pick signed by this regime just off the GP that he's never missed a game. Knock on wood. Well, that's not really wood, but I don't know. I guess this is wood. Anyway, um, you know, so... You could argue that he is the best pick. I mean, he's always out there on the field. 
one of the only snaps he missed in his career was when Russell Wilson bitch ass threw his shoe. I go, well, that's just some bitch ass. Oh, that's who's Faba. I'm gonna save all that energy for hate week, but um, so it, well deserved party at Bam Bam's house. Um, you know, maybe I have I have to go get me a, a Bam uh, Fred Warner Bam Bam jersey. You know, I might, I might have to go get me one. Um, so I promised that we would get into our all time offensive draft. Um, you know, uh, we'll just jump right into it. Me personally, um, I'm going with you. Number one, you got to go, Jerry Rice. Um, I know everybody's going to scream Joe Montana, Joe Montana, Joe Montana. And yeah, you, you could argue that you're going to take the, the, you know, quarterback, obviously. Um, but the way I look at it, if, if, if I was doing this draft back and forth, let's say with one other person, I'm okay circling around and getting Steve Young and hooking up Steve Young with Jerry Rice. Because Steve and Jerry have more touchdowns than Joe, Joe and Jerry. So, and I believe they played the same amount of time, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89. Damn, God, we'll figure out the math later. But because you get Jerry, Steve played some of those games. And anyway, um, I think that, you know, you select Jerry Rice and you say, hey, whatever quarterback you give Jerry Rice, he, he's going to make him okay. So, Obviously, you go with Joe Montana, ideally at number, you know, your, your second pick. But, you know, if you're, like I said, if you're doing this back and forth with somebody, Joe Montana's not going to be there. And so, uh, I'm sorry. I think that you just got to go Jerry. And then Joe's going to go number two. Um, I think that number three, I'm going with Frank Gore. And um, I, I think that's pretty obvious. You know, where you're, where you're talking about offensive draft, you got your quarter, you know, your greatest receiver, greatest football player of all time in Jerry Rice. You got the greatest quarterback every time in Joe. And you got the greatest running back in franchise history in Frank Gore. Um, now, Number four is where I think that, you know, I'm probably going to get the most smoke and and get a lot of people disagreeing with me. Uh, I'm going to go Roger Craig as my fullback over Tom Rathman. Because, A, obviously, you know, I I think Roger Craig's, I don't want to say a better player, but, I mean, it's Roger Craig. And to me, it's if you could have – a backfield of Roger Craig and Frank Gore, where you know Roger Craig could lead block because he did play fullback, but also he's a legit running threat as running back. I mean, that's nasty. And, I mean, you know, Mr. High Knees and everything coming at you, you know, so you're going to get, you know, the fullback dives. And all those plays, but you're going to get it with somebody that, that played a, a lot of running back. It was a thousand thousand. First player to a thousand thousand. Scored three touchdowns in the Super Bowl. First player to score three touchdowns in the Super Bowl, I believe. So, you know, number five, you got to go T.O. And. I know that there's some people that said, you know, you would go, you know, T.O. would probably be number three. And T.O. is clearly the second best player to play for the franchise. But, or receiver, second best receiver. Um, But I feel that an offense that has Jerry Rice, Joe Montana, Roger Craig, and Frank Gore is going to be all right. I mean, it doesn't. I'm not gonna say it doesn't matter who the second receiver is, but does it necessarily really matter who the second receiver is? Um, so that you figure now we're gonna, you know, 
I'd like to go. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna go John Taylor. Um, I know, I know that you know we're we're not getting the offensive linemen and everything like that, and I just feel that with the Niners, you're going to get some a legit offensive line. You know, you're going to get an offensive line that's won some championships. And so I don't want to say you could just plug anybody in there, but I, I think that I feel pretty secure and comfortable saying that I, I built my offense to sustain, you know, to be successful. I mean, you got Joe Montana, Frank Gore, Roger Craig, T.O., Jerry Rice, and then if you're, you know, just going with one running back, you got Frank, you got John Taylor. T.O., John Taylor, and Jerry Rice. <sighs> Man. And then, you know, tight end, you got to go George Kittle. And I know that's difficult because, you know, you're thinking about Brent Jones and everything like that, but I mean, George Kittle is a different animal. And so, yeah, you could say maybe Brent Jones was a, was a slightly better blocker. Um, was a better receiver than a blocker, though. But I'm going George Kittle. I know it's not long and, and all that, but, I mean, trajectory and, and, you know, knock on wood and pray and all that. But – you know, George Kittle's going on that trajectory. He's going to wind up and be the best tight end in team history. So I don't see a mistake on on taking George Kittle. And then, you know, if you want to go offensive line, I'm going to go – Bob Sinclair and Joe Staley at my tackles. So we could say seven, eight. You're taking, you know, Joe Staley, Bob Sinclair. Um, I know a lot of people are going to say, what about Forrest Blue? Um, center, I'm going to take. This is just based off of who I think would be available. I'm going to take Jeremy Newberry. Um, I know that they're, um, or Jesse Zappone. Oh, no, no, no. I'll take Jeremy Dewberry, and I'm going to make Jesse Sapolo a guard. And then so you figure Fred Quinn would be in there. And I, I think that right there you got a, a pretty pretty um, solid O-line. We're going to go ahead and we're going to run um, a quick commercial break. And then we will be back. All right, and we're back. So, honestly, that didn't that, that didn't take as long as I thought it was going to take. Um, I don't know why they do letting us do the the three minute ads anymore. Um, so, let's see. We also got this article on Niners.com by Kiana Martin talking about when. Uh, Kyle Shanahan threw it into the pizza box. Um, let me see. Hold on. I can share my screen. So let me go ahead and uh, let me 
Let me go ahead and uh, share my screen. And then, um, okay. Um, I don't know if it'll let you do the audio, but, um, okay. Okay, so here we go. One more time. Oh, wow. Did, did it even do that? Oh, my God. Okay, sorry, y'all. Okay, we're going to do it one more time, one more time. You're going to hit a kid. Let's go. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? You're going to hit a kid. Let's go. Oh! <laughs> You can tell Kyle really cusses a lot. Um, anyway, yeah, sorry about that. I totally thought I was sharing when I wasn't. And, oh, my God, that's so horrible. Um, so, apparently, let, let me read some of the article right here. Um, has spent the bulk of his retirement down in San Diego, Joe Staley has. And both Shanahan and Staley have caught up with one another on several occasions this offseason, including over the holiday weekend, as a viral video of the two taken on social media. Okay. While picking up steam and views across social media, Staley retweeted the video, specifically the head coach calling his shot and landing the pro throw in the pizza oven across the street. On Tuesday morning, Staley was a guest on 95.7 of the game's morning rose to give the backstory on Shanahan's skillful throw. The funny thing about the video was a buildup because Kyle was talking for, high, for five minutes before the video about how he was going to hit that little pizza oven. And we were like, no, you're not. You're not going to do that. And there's no way you can hit it, Staley explained. At first, and first one, first take, he didn't stop talking for the rest of the day. Since posting the video on Sunday, the clip was garnered nearly 700,000 Twitter views on Twitter alone. Staley, although Staley and Shanahan have been light, linked to one another and don't anticipate the left tackle return to the 49ers just yet, Staley, who spent four seasons under Shanahan, retired after 13 seasons in the NFL due to deteriorating neck injury. Staley expressed his is in no hurry to return to football, even though his head coach has extended the offer to rejoin the team from an alternate view. I know Kyle's trying to get me back up there to work on his staff, but I'm not ready to do that coaching thing yet. Staley added, I'm really honestly just enjoying the time that I have my, my family right now. I have two young girls, seven and four, and we're just enjoying spending a ton of time together. I'm catching up on all the time I miss while playing football, and I'm not in a huge hurry to get back into something. So, but, um, Apparently, um, Shanahan sucks at, the, at at quarterback, and he's always throwing picks to the defense and everything like that. And um, so, like that's I guess was like the whole thing about Shanahan sucking and, and all that, and he was hyping himself up and man, just just crazy off season. Good to see the coach letting loose. Um. Let me see. We're going to run about 31 minutes today. Um, so we got about you know, 10 more minutes or nine more minutes. Uh, so let me go ahead and look up. Um, there's, 
pretty much no nine in news to go by. I mean, Fred Warner's contract, huge news, obviously. Um, I don't know who got it first, but I saw it from, if you give me one second, look in the Facebook group. Brian sent it. And Mike Garfello on Twitter, yeah, it was where I heard it from first. Uh, Jason says, hold on, uh, I want to make sure that I get this right. Because I told him, uh, uh, he he says, he's Lance on Sunday, book it. Seriously, LOL. I mean, it has to have, get done by Monday, so I'm just taking my shot. So Jason says by Sunday. I said, if this freaking contract is signed, if, if Trey Lance signs, you know, Monday morning, obviously, you know, Sunday, whatever, it's announced, you know, by – Adam Schefter or whoever. I told him we're making going to Vegas and putting some money down on stuff for the season. Cause uh yeah. Um I say it's gonna come soon. Um I would anticipate sometime this weekend, honestly. I I I'm saying they're they're working on it this weekend and it gets done sometime this weekend, maybe wee hours of Monday morning type of situation. But um I fully anticipate Trey Lance to be Trey Lance, uh, Trey Sermon and Ambry Tom, uh, Ambry Thomas to be signed, sealed, and delivered. Oh no, no, no! It's not Am- Yeah, it is Ambry Thomas. Um, signed, sealed, and delivered by Tuesday. Um, oh yeah, I gotta set up the raid. Um, let me see. Give me. So, looking more roles, looking more, looking more, looking more. Man, I love yawn a lot. It's horrible. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, yeah, here we go. Um, so, yeah, I mean, everybody's. On about Jalen Hurd. Uh, they got an article on Niners.com about that. I mean, cool, awesome. I would say if it's going to happen any year, it would be this year. But I'm not banking on it. Uh, I hope the Niners are. Yeah, maybe they know. I shouldn't say they can't know he's not going to be injured because there's no guarantees. But maybe they figure, hey, look, you know, Third year is the charm. If it's not this year, then, hey, you chalk it up. And, you know, kind of interesting to look at the 2017-2018 draft. You know, um, you know, kind of full cycle. What, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yeah, you know, uh, full cycle, kind of look back. And then 2018, you're about to hit. After this season, 2018, you're going to hit full cycle as well. And so it'll be kind of first interesting to look back at those two drafts and see where we are and ultimately where draft classes are judged is how many players you give second contracts to. Um, well, George Kittle, DJ Jones, but that was a one year. And honestly, I think that if it had not been a normal offseason, maybe maybe DJ Jones doesn't sign. But I, I don't think that's because you didn't want to sign DJ Jones. So I'm still going to count that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, what? Obviously, Salman Thomas and Ruben Foster, um, C.J. Beathard, Joe Williams, Akilah Witherspoon, Trent Taylor, uh, George Kittle, DJ, DJ Jones, and then Peter T., and then Adrian Colbert. So, yeah, George Kittle and DJ Jones are the only players left on the team from that draft. And in 2018, what Mike McGlynn, she... Uh, it's various more who's torn his ACL but was going to make the team. And Fred Warner, obviously. Um, let's see, fourth round. You got Contavious Street in that draft. So, not the best, but you know, let's go ahead. 
we're going to uh, run this commercial, run our raid, and then, uh, or run the commercial, do the little read, run that raid, and then get up out of here. So we got to All right, and we're back. And we'd like to remind everybody to go to twitch.tv forward slash Niner Faithful Radio to catch all our live streams. And also, make sure you use your free Amazon Prime subscription on Niner Faithful Radio. It's free. I mean, come on. Help out your favorite channel. For the Faithful by the Faithful pre-launch sale is coming July 30th. Save 20% off of all our designs. Go to NinerFaithfulRadio.com forward slash shop for more details. And also follow Niner Faithful Radio Shop on social media at Niner Faithful Radio on Instagram and Twitter. Or Instagram and Facebook and also Twitter at Niner Faithful RS. And... Go to cgiant.com, use the promo code Niner Faithful Radio, all one word, to save on all your concert, theater, and sporting event tickets, as well as help out the show. Freaking white boy and panda. Uh, sorry about that, y'all. My boys is. Uh, okay. Sorry about that. Um, go to cgiant.com, use the promo code Niner Faithful Radio to save on all your concert, theater, and sporting event tickets as well as help out the show. Get your officially licensed gear from shop49ers.com. By using our affiliate link, it costs you no more and really does help out the show. Go to NinerFaithfulRadio.com to check out all our interviews and previous episodes of all our shows and go to NinerFaithfulRadio.com forward slash subscribe to see where you subscribe on the podcast. Follow us on social media on Facebook, Instagram, and Tumblr at Niner Faithful Radio. And on Twitter at Niner Faithful R. We're going to go ahead and raid the channel. And uh, he's playing some Madden with the Niners. So, raid. Okay. We're good on that. We shall so see y'all next time.
All right, y'all. Make sure you tune in to Good Morning Niner Empire Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time with your host, Jamie. Till then, and then catch me Sunday on Red and Gold Rewire where we take a look back at Niner history. Till then, faith, love, and happiness. Go. Niners.